In today's video, I'd like to talk about how to use the data table feature in Microsoft Excel to do a what if analysis. So if you notice over here in cell um, C14, I have a formula. Basically, it's using the PMT formula, uh, which means payment. It's one of the financial functions in Microsoft Excel. Now, I want you to know that you can use the, the lookup, uh, the data table with any kind of formula. This is just one example. Notice how um, in cell A4 I have the principal, and in B4 I have the term, and in C4 I have the interest rate. In fact, here I have the payment function, and you can see the payment function uses uh, C4 and B4 and A4. So down column B, I have 4.5%, 5%, all the way through 8%. So in other words, I want to see how the payment function would look with all of these different values. So in cell C14, I have the payment function again, same exact as what I have in D4, although uh, that's not really important, but you know it is the same function at this point. Well, I would like to extra extrapolate that such that uh, it would have the same function for all these different values using the, the percent. So we're gonna pick on, first of all, you're gonna highlight your data. We're gonna highlight, uh, notice how um, the formula is on the first row of what's going to be on the data table that's important. So I'm going to highlight from C, I mean from B14 down to C21. And I'll pick in the data menu. And this is going to be under what if analysis. And you see something that's called the data table. Now, you'd have to agree that the cells in column B represent a column. So this is just going to be a data table with with one variable, and then Sue will do one with two variables. So I don't have row input, I do have column input. So what this is really asking you is what cell in the formula is these numbers really supposed to take the place of? So in my case, it's going to be C4. See, if we went back to C14, um, it would refer back to C4 these numbers in column B are taking the place of C4 in the formula. So I'm going to click on OK. And you can see how now it's going to show me all of the different values of the formula with these different, um, with these different interest levels. So we were able to extrapolate that pretty quickly. Now let's see how a data table can work when you have both the column and the row input. In this case, I have the same PMT function Notice how it's pointing to C4 and B4 and A4 within the formula. Now going across the top here, I have different principal amounts. And going down the side, I do have the interest rates. So I want to see how that formula would look with all the different um, principal amounts against all the different interest rates. Now in this case, the formula is in the corner of the table, and that's important. So I'm going to highlight from E14 all the way over with as many rows and columns that you have. Now I'll pick on the data menu and I'll do what if analysis and we'll do the data table. Now imagine here I do have row input, right? This row 14 in my case is a row, right? So in the formula that replaces cell A4. The column input is really referring to column E at this time. In the formula that, re that replaces cell C4. So that's what I'm choosing here. This really means what number does this row replace in the formula? And this really means what number does um, this column replace in the formula? And the formula has to be over here in cell uh, in the corner of the table. I'm going to click on OK. And now look exactly what happened. It gave me all the different results of the different amounts versus the different interest rates. And that's how we can use the data table, uh, either with one variable or two variables in Microsoft Excel 2013, 2010, and 2007.